Hi guys, now if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you may have seen a video I did a little while ago about clipping and about underpowering your subs and how it's bad for them, how it can create heat and maybe blow your subs up. And that's all well and good knowing the, that information, but it's no good if you can't see that you're clipping. And now usually, to see if you're clipping your amp or your head unit, you'd have to buy it on oscilloscope, which is expensive, or you buy a cheap knockoff from eBay, which is complicated to use, maybe not very reliable. And so to see whether you're clipping or not, in your amp or your head unit, your signal, I come up with pretty neat way of showing this without having to buy any expensive equipment and you can do this just using audacity on a laptop so check it out guys i'll show you how to do it okay so the amplifier which i'll be using for the purposes of this video this is a little realistic pa amplifier here only 20 watts single channel um it clips nice and easy because it's old school and it's low power so this will be great for the purposes of the video uh, up here we've got a line level converter it just takes the high voltage from the speaker outputs and converts it down to rca level voltage uh, to plug into the laptop the speakers I've got that plugged into is the famous Dayton 4s near the magnets from my famous video on YouTube with them in the car. And of course, uh, just a laptop with Audacity open here. Now to check for clipping, what you want to do is you want to use for your signal uh, a frequency generator or something that can generate a pure sine wave. And you want to make sure that this sine wave is as clean as possible. So you don't want to be clipping your input because then it will be clipping your output. So on my phone here, on my Android device, I've got an app called FunkGen, which is just a basic, simple frequency generator. I've got a 45 hertz on there. And the first thing we're going to do is test to see whether this app gives a clean sine wave signal. Uh, and to do that, all you do is plug the phone directly into the input of the laptop so it can be seen and recorded by Audacity and then we can see what the wave looks like and see if it's clean. So let's give it a go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start the sine wave on my phone. Press start. Make sure there's no graphics equalizers or beats audio turned on on the phone. You want to be pure as signal as possible. Let's now go ahead over to Audacity uh, and I'm going to focus on there. I'm going to go up to this input bar and click monitor input so I can see the little bar come up. Now, you want to adjust the volume on the phone or on the input on the head unit whatever you're using as your input so that the bar is just shy of the maximum so you don't want to clip the input you, want, you don't want it to distort too much input signal so I'm going to put it just about there just underneath the highest so on my phone that volume is about you know it's coming up for three quarters of four there so just to check whether the input signal is clean so then now I've got that nearing max out I'm going to go on to record make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on and zoom in on the waveform and there you have it so that is now uh, a live update visualization of the sine wave 45 hertz coming from my phone and going into audacity so it's basically working like an oscilloscope so you can see the wave there nice and clean there's no clipping there's no dodgy parts on the wave so that's a good clean signal to use Okay, so now I've confirmed the phone gives a clean signal. I'm going to go ahead and press start on the app again. Turn the volume up to maximum this time. Uh, get a nice big signal going to the amplifier here. Turn the amp on. Start at the lowest volume, so turn the volume right down to zero. Open up Audacity. Hit record again. Make this a bit bigger so we can see. Zoom in to see the wave. Uh, and now I'm going to slowly turn up the amplifier and see what the wave looks like on the screen. And this is at 45 hertz, so here we go. Just slowly turn the amplifier up. Got a bit of signal. Uh, so you can see the waves coming in now. Looks pretty clean at that volume. Let's turn it up a little bit more. Okay, nice and clean. Got a bit higher. Gradually getting higher. Nice and clean still. Still looking good. You can see the woof is starting to move now. Go to here, yeah, with is starting to move. Back to the screen. Go for a bit more volume. Okay, so now I'm increasing the volume even more. Can you see what's kind of starting to happen to the wave? It's starting to become very, very dirty. Now, the woofers aren't moving at that much more than they were when it was a clean signal. If I put my ear very, very close to the woofers themselves, I can just very faintly hear a bit of distortion. Nothing major, so if these woofers were in the back of your car, you definitely wouldn't notice this distorted sound. And this is what the wave looks like. So this is where it starts getting bad for your speakers. Let's turn up a bit more. Now you can see the wave is distorting even more. It's not becoming a proper square wave, but you can see what's happening to it. Let's turn up even more. 
Now I can start to hear some definite distortion coming from the speakers there. You know, it's not a clean sound from the speakers anymore, it's a little bit distorted. Back to the screen. Now let's turn it up even more. This wave now looks absolutely nothing like a sine wave. That is a very, very distorted signal. Um, it'll only be giving out 20 watts, uh, but it will be very distorted 20 watts. And you know, you kind of keep turning the amplifier up, trying to get more volume. But rather than getting any more watts out of it, you're just making this, the signal and the sine wave look very bad. And this is not good for the speakers at all. This is what causes heat and damage to the speakers because it's a dodgy sine wave going to the speakers, not very clean, not making them move in a, in a unison uh, movement and this creates distortion. So let's turn it back down to where we get a clean signal. Bit lower, bit lower. There, that's about, that's about the limit. There we go. So that is the loudest that I can have this amplifier turned up to whilst giving a clean signal to the speakers here. Anything more than that, it starts to become distorted and the wave starts to deform and it's not too good for your equipment. Now in reality, if you were using this in a car, pretend that this is the car's head unit, pretend this is your subwoofer amplifier. The subwoofer amplifier you generally have turned up pretty high, you have a set level. So let's just pretend I'm maxing out my car amplifiers again, just turn all the way to the top, so the amplifier is you know, continuously giving out its full potential to whatever signal it gets in. So what I'll do is on my head unit here, I would set the volume down to zero to start with, put the amplifier to maximum, that's what I've got my car amp set at, go over to here, hit record again and start monitoring. Now what I would do, if this was my head unit, I would actually see what maximum number of volume is before clipping, because obviously I was going up the slider here, so you can't really tell where the maximum is without looking at it. So if I go up here, just start to slowly increase the volume, so you start to see the wave come on the screen. Yeah, here it comes, uh, a little bit wave there, getting higher, Let's zoom in a bit more, so that's seven, eight, nine clicks on the phone, so that's where the wave is a little bit iffy there, so I would say, yeah definitely, so nine clicks there on the volume, uh, is the maximum that I would have my head unit at. And so you can do that with your head unit, you can turn it up to like sort of volume uh, 20, 25, and you can get the value on the head unit as to where the amp starts to clip out. Now whilst I've got all this set up, there was one more thing I wanted to try and test, uh, which was this Vibe Delta Box bass generator uh, line driver. It's basically just a simple line driver, but it's got a built-in frequency generator, and you can press a button, uh, like a little plunger up front, and it just sends a, a pure sine wave to the amp for your sub, so you can show off your bass nice and quickly. Um, there are the frequency generator controls, bass frequency and bass level. You've got a little button on there, normal or bass, and I'm gonna plug the outputs of that directly into the line input of the amplifier, uh, sorry, the laptop, in Audacity so I can see what the wave looks like coming from the Delta Box. I've been told that this doesn't give out a particularly clean signal through the frequency generator, so now it's my time to test it and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead, click record on Audacity, make this bigger so you can see, zoom in so we can see the wave, and I'm gonna go ahead and press the bass button at 30 hertz on the wire bass generator. Turn the volume up a bit. Okay, so you can see a wave starting to appear now. There we go. So let me zoom in a bit more on this wave. Now that's a 30 hertz wave generated by the bass generator. Now as you can see, it's not a clipped wave, but that is not a clean signal by any means. Can you see that? It's kind of like, it's kind of like just a very poorly created and generated signal. Not very clean. You can see there, it starts to kind of come up and then it sort of dips in again and it's just it's not really generated very well. The app on my phone, the, the frequency generator on my phone, does it a much better job of this. Let me turn the frequency up and see whether it gets better as you go higher with the frequency. So I'm turning the frequency up now to around about 50 hertz. A bit higher, there we go. So this is a much higher frequency now from the bass generator. And um, as you can see, you've still got the same sort of problem there still not that great um, at really much higher frequencies. So personally, back down to 30 hertz, I wouldn't be using this in my car uh, to generate a frequency for the subs because it's not particularly clean and I don't want to send that signal to my powerful subs 
um, it won't be too particularly good for them. I'd much rather use the application on my phone, which gives a much cleaner signal to the subs. So there you go, guys. I hope that video has been useful to you to show you how you can view the wave coming from your head unit or your amplifier to see whether you're clipping and to help set your gains correctly so that you'll never go into clipping on your amplifier, your head unit, so you know exactly where it stands. Uh, if you've got any comments, anything you want to ask me or let me know about the video, just leave it in the comments. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, have fun with all that tea and set up your system correctly. Uh, stay tuned, guys, some cool stuff to come.